50 things you love in Breath of the Wild. And we're gonna play a little game. If you love at least one of these things, you have to subscribe by law. And if you didn't, you could just block me and never watch my content again, it's fine. You love the attention to detail. Like when you speak to an NPC with no clothes on and they have different dialogue. You love Breath of the Wild's semi-realistic kind of cartoon art style. It's very unique and it adds a lot to the game. Cell shading was used to add the cartoon effect. And if you go in this little hole at the bridge of Hylia, you would see what the game would look like without it. And it just doesn't fit. You love the story. Even if it's not a huge one like other Zelda games, it's still a great one. You love how big and open the world is. It really is one of the best open worlds in gaming. You love how beautiful the game is. Almost six years later, you still love to watch the breathtaking sunsets. You love how many meals there are. No matter what effect you need, there's a meal for it. It's a lot more interesting and fun than just throwing some items into a crafting menu and a potion comes out of it. You love that you can solve puzzles any way you want to. Sure, there are easier ways to do some puzzles, but you love doing things your way, and you feel like a genius for it. You love the combat system. You love how depending on your playstyle, there's always a way to take down an enemy. The weapon durability also forces you to use weapons you otherwise wouldn't. It really adds a challenge to combat no matter what situation you're in. You love the soundtrack. While it's not like other Zelda soundtracks, it doesn't need to be. You love that you can always discover new things about the game, whether it be from yourself, from your friends, or from YouTube. It always feels like there's something new to discover. You love how many different armor sets there are. There really are so many different styles and buffs for your taste. It makes the game feel more like it's your own. You love how much personality all the NPCs have. There's people like Selmy, who is really passionate about surfing. Bolson, who is Bolson. And this guy, who's just just a regular guy. Much like the fact there's always something new to discover, there's always a new challenge for you to try. Wanna beat the game without touching the grass? Go ahead. Wanna beat the game without runes? Go for it. Wanna try master mode permadeath? Sure, but I I'm not buying your coffin. Breath of the Wild also has a lot more replayability because of this. You love how many side quests there are. While they're not the greatest in the series, they still add a lot of variety to playing nonetheless. Another thing that adds a ton of replayability to the game is the DLC. People ask me all the time, Celios, should I buy the DLC? And my response to that is yes! Yes, of course you should! Did you miss the part where it adds new armor sets, a travel medallion, and a whole new dungeon with a boss with the, with the motorcycle for some reason? You love the climbing mechanic. It's a fun way to get places and depending on how far you are in the game, it becomes easier with more stamina. You love how many different mounts there are in the game. There's the obvious ones like horses, the giant horse, and deer. But there's also the weirder ones like the lord of the mountain, skeleton horses, and bears for some reason. I wish you could register the bears. You love the shrines. You love how at any time you want in the game, you can just go and do a mini dungeon. It's a way to cleanse your palate between exploring. The reason why there aren't too many dungeons in Breath of the Wild is because the shrines took out what would have been traditional Zelda dungeons. Speaking of dungeons, you love the Divine Beasts. In my opinion, having the dungeon be giant mechanical weapons is a lot cooler than a couple of temples thrown in the world. They aren't that grand or long, but again, we have shrines instead. I mentioned this earlier, but you love weapon variety and how the game makes you switch between weapons. There are so many different weapon sets in the game. It does its job very well. It adds variety. You love how many hidden easter eggs are scattered around the world, most of them being references to past Zelda games. Some of the more obvious ones are the Temple of Time, Lon Lon Ranch, and the Bridge of Hylia. There's also some lesser known ones, like these bridges named after teachers at the Knights Academy from Skyward Sword, the lakes in the Hyrule Forest that are named to the Kokiri children from Ocarina of Time, and these islands that reference Tingle and his friends. You love how detailed the sound design is, and the attention to detail here is insane. The stealth armor doesn't lower the volume of your weapons, but there were entirely different sounds recorded for this. Details like this make the game so much more polished. You love the Terrytown quest. You love watching the town slowly be built as you help gather wooden workers. You love all the different races. You love how they walk around the world. I don't know. They do something. You love how many glitches there are. There's always a new fun glitch waiting to be discovered. You love that you can set your own goals in a play session. You always end up getting sidetracked though. I swear, that's the only reason these core arcs were added. I am he. You love shield surfing. It's great for getting places a little faster without needing a mount. And also, you feel really cool doing it. You love that, despite how much it hurts, Nintendo didn't revive the champions. With them staying gone, it makes the calamity feel just as destructive as it needs to be. It also makes the story a lot more impactful than it would have been. You love Kilton's dumb little monster shop. Even though you have to sacrifice all your monster parts to get anything good, the Dark Link set is worth it. I still stand by that. You love Link's ragdoll physics. Even if they're annoying at times, it's still funny almost six years later. You love how much tomfoolery you can get up to. The world really is your canvas in this way. You can launch things into the sky with the cryonis glitch, launch guardians into the sky with this raft glitch, or launch yourself with this bomb glitch. I love launching things into the air, if you couldn't tell. You love Zelda's 
personality. You love all three labyrinths located in Akala, Ibra, and the Gerudo Desert. They add a fun, unique challenge to spice up the exploration a bit. You love that you can farm Lynels and get a ton of powerful weapons. You love that you can feed the animals and monsters. You can feed animals various nuts and fruits, and you can feed some monsters like Bokoblins with raw meat. Speaking of Bokoblins, you love all the fun animations the Bokos have. You probably watch them from behind a bush or something. I, I don't know, you, 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 you little creep. You love the fact Beetle is secretly a psychopath. You love the boss fights. Breath of the Wild isn't the hardest game out there, but some of these bosses add a challenge to the game. Bosses like Water Blight and Thunder Blight made me do 50 jumping jacks and then cry myself to sleep. It was so hard. Breath of the Wild has a secret boss scaling system that makes each boss progressively harder as you play. That's why whatever order you do the Divine Beast in, the first boss is always the easiest, and the last one is the hardest. Don't be smart in the comments. I'll ban you. You love the Shia technology. It's such a great theme for the game. Breath of the Wild mixes fantasy elements with sci-fi elements extremely well, and I can't wait to see what tech we have in Tears of the Kingdom. You love that the enemies get harder as you play. I mentioned this earlier with the boss scaling, but what's more well known is this also happens with the overworld enemies too. In the beginning of the game, most enemies are red, or one tier. Later in the game, however, they start to go from one tier all the way to four tier. And if you're in master mode, even five tier. This is terrifying. You love how many things you can chop down in Hyrule. You can cut grass for fairies, trees for wood, and NPCs for fun. Don't question my hobbies. You love all the stupid ways you can die. I talk more about this in another video, so go watch that if you want to see me go more in depth. You love suiting up in your pirate outfit and sailing the open seas looking for treasure, especially Bread. Sure, sure, rupees are fine, but honestly, we could save those for later for bread purchasing when we get back to shore. What really matters is that I get all of the bread. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, you, 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 you get all of the bread at the end of the journey. <clears throat> yeah, that, that's definitely what I meant. Anyways, this message was brought to you by the bread, bread pipe. What are you doing in my room? Oh crap, I gotta go. I thought I hey, locked hey, my windows. Why are you doing this again? Get out. You love sand seal surfing. It's a quick and easy way to get around the desert. You love gambling you might have a problem. You love that game's lore. You can really tell how much time and care went into writing the history of Hyrule. Unless you're a Zelda history buff, you're always finding new details about the world. You love you can stock up on a bunch of rare items and then sell them. You especially love spending a lot of your time in the Goron Mines preparing to take over Hyrule's economy. You love finding different ways to unalive fish. You can bomb them, bomb them but with arrows, drop things on them, drop them in lava, launch them into the air. Yeah, uh, Sorry, Mifa. But the one thing you and I love most about Breath of the Wild is undoubtedly the community. The Breath of the Wild community genuinely has some of the nicest, most creative, and most dedicated people I've ever seen in the gaming community. I love sharing my ideas and thoughts with you all, and I love listening to yours. I think it's what makes the community so great, and I think it's what makes Zelda so great. Thanks for being awesome, and thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Click here to see 20 things you hate about Breath of the Wild.